With its expansive and distinct world, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 delivers a satisfying mix of story, exploration, and deep combat that makes it one of the standout role-playing games of the year. Some navigational trouble pads out its running time a bit, but in a game that offers at least 70 hours of adventure, the vast majority of it is a joy to journey through. This world where people live on the backs of continent-sized titans has a long history of games behind it, but fortunately, you don't need to be familiar with that to jump in cold here. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 tells a fascinating tale of a salvager boy named Rex, who stumbles into a permanent bond with one of the world's most powerful living weapons. Naturally, some bad guys want that power for themselves, and they're very persistent. Many of the boss battles have you fighting against the same baddies over and over again. Excellent English language voice acting and richly imagined characters with strong personalities usually prevent this fantastical scenario from slipping too forcefully into cliché and repetition. You'll definitely find some JRPG silliness mixed into all the heady philosophical talk about the Living Blades, their human drivers, and the dark nature of the world. But Xenoblade Chronicles 2 stands out for its optimistic view that the diverse cultures of the world can overcome their differences for the greater good. Adventures through these cultures help grant Xenoblade Chronicles 2 impressive visual variety as it leads you through landscapes ranging from snowy wastes to idyllic villages where the people live in harmony with nature. They're rewarding to visit too because many locations change with the tides and towns reach new development levels based on your activities, which nets discounts and better items. These zones are often huge, which is sometimes a double-edged sword because of poor navigation. One of your only indications of where a quest needs to go is a directional marker on the compass at the top of the screen, and it's often not clear how to get the objectives because of the otherwise impressive verticality of the landscapes. Figuring out how to reach something far above or below can take an hour or so of wandering until you find the path. The skip travel map helps a bit, but the menus are annoying as a whole and especially so in this case because it doesn't automatically open the map for the zone you're in. The anime art style allows for expressive faces and a timeless look, although it does make the few characters with 3D models stick out like sore thumbs. In docked mode, it runs at a resolution below 1080p by default, and even then we saw occasional frame rate drops with large groups on screen. Late in the campaign, there were also strange dubbing issues in which voices were about 5 seconds out of sync. Frankly, I don't think they've got much interest in what you have to say. Why not? Xenoblade Chronicles 2's combat almost seems laughably simple at first. It's based on a system of auto attacks in which you're supposed to activate one of your three abilities on the action buttons when an auto attack sequence finishes. You also need to move around your opponent to take advantage of positional bonuses. But the slow introduction of new features reveals that it's actually satisfyingly complex after only around four hours, and the tutorial continues to roll them out to the point where it's still exposing helpful new information 50 hours in. Much of this complexity springs from the blades, who align with a particular element like water and each have a specialized weapon for their driver. Each of the decent sized cast of playable characters has a main blade, but you can also unlock many alternate ones with different role specializations, elemental alignments, or even masteries for interaction with the world. You only control a single driver during each battle, but making sure the other two members of your party complement your skills and role is essential to victory. It's rewarding when you figure out which elemental combos and skills help you topple particularly troublesome enemies or fill a bar that unleashes a cool tag team attack. This system encourages creative thinking as well. There were several times when a boss seemed unbeatable, but smartly switching out blades and managing gear to take advantage of certain elemental weaknesses brought them down. Blades are essentially party members too, and you can undertake side quests with them and unlock mastery ranks. This makes it easier to knock down certain barricades you find in the world for shortcuts. Unfortunately, for a whole 50 or 60 hours, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 gives you the impression that these are merely optional, but then you reach a spot in the main story where you absolutely need specific masteries to progress. That halts the flow of the story at an urgent point and can take hours because you'll need to hunt down consumables, hunt specific bees, and undertake specific side quests to boost the masteries. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a standout RPG that manages to keep its story, combat, and exploration interesting over the course of at least 70 hours of adventure through an impressively varied and rich world. Getting from place to place can be confusing, but outside of that and a multi-hour progression roadblock near the end, it's an excellent game full of tough, memorable battles and a positive message. For more, check out the first 17 minutes of gameplay of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. A scout!